Okay guys, in this video I want to talk to you about sea shipping. I've been getting a few quotes the last couple of weeks as it's getting to the stage where I'm just about to place my order and I need to know my exact shipping costs so that I can make sure my profitability is correct before I kind of commit three or four thousand pounds to the order. So I just want to share you with you my experience and show you some of the quotes I've obtained and also some of the information that, that they've needed in order to give me these quotes. So what I've done is I've set up an amazing PowerPoint presentation, which I don't think I've done since I was at school. So look at the quality we've got. So sea shipping for Amazon UK FBA. First thing I just want to touch on are the shipping terms. Now there are lots of terms you've probably seen all sorts, you know, DDP, DUP, CIF, etc. But I'm just going to focus on the key ones which you're going to hear a lot and also the ones I would recommend you probably use um, because lots of the others are going to most more likely end up costing you more money than if you go down this route. So the first one is EXW or XWorks and what that means is the cost that the manufacturer will, will give you literally just to make your goods. So they make the goods but they're still sat at their, their warehouse or at their, at their factory should I say. Um, so FOB, which is the one you probably want to use, which is either freight on board, which is what I've been calling it, or some I've seen some websites call it free on board as well. Um, that is the cost that the supplier will give you for your unit cost and to get that to the nearest port. Um, and then the idea is you then arrange a freight forwarder who would then come in, collect that from the port, and then get it shipped to you. Now, from the quotes I've been getting, I am almost certainly going to be using a freight forwarder because the costs are massively different. And I'm not talking £50 or so. I've had quotes anywhere up to kind of £1,500 all the way down to just over £300. So there is a big, big difference. Um, so if you get your shipping right, it will make or break your product if you don't. On to how I got a quote. So these are the details that pretty much every freight forwarder I spoke to was asking for. So I'm just gonna, it, it, you can get these from your supplier. So I asked them roughly how much my product weighed and they said it's about 1.4 kilos. So I'm gonna get 500 of those, which is roughly around 800 kilos. The next thing they wanted was the carton size because I need to work out the cubic meterage of your shipment. So my supplier told me there was gonna be 50 cartons. Those were the dimensions and within each carton there are 10 units. It doesn't really matter how many units are in each carton to be honest for shipping purposes. I just put in there kind of to illustrate to you guys. I've got 10 units, 50 cartons, so 500 units in total. The shipping terms, just tell the freight forwarder what your supplier is gonna do. So is it gonna be freight on board and if so, to which port? So my supplier could do either a port called Ningbo, I believe that's how you pronounce it, or um, to Shanghai. Um, so most of the freight forwarders come back to me on the first port there rather than Shanghai. The method that I'm going to be using is sea shipping. Uh, that's because my products are so heavy. Now, apparently if you've got lighter shipments, um, air freight is an option, but um, the air freight cost quote I got was 1600 pound. So I won't be using air freight for this and I haven't spent any more time on air freight because of that. So maybe I'll do another video on air freight when I actually you know, import a product using air freight. The next, the final thing they wanted was the delivery address. Now before you actually create your shipment on Amazon, you won't know which of the Amazon um, warehouses it will be going to. So I just wanted to Google, picked one of the ones in the UK because pretty much any in the UK are gonna be roughly the same cost and it will give you a good idea of what the shipment should be. So on to the next thing, and that is the freight forwarding quotes I got. Now I did get three or four, but I just wanted to show you two of the better ones. Uh, I've, I've kind of taken off most of the details about who they were from, um, but if anyone wants to know which freight forwarder I got these from, um, or who I'm actually gonna be using, then you know, drop me a comment and I'll, I'll let you know down below. So you can see that they've got the same, same information, they've got the weight is 800 kilos. I told them the dimensions and the carton size and they calculated it as the cubic meterage as 3.35, 50 cartons in total. So these are the freight on board charges they, they went for, which was $73 to, um, to collect it from Ningbo. The terminal handling fee, delivery order, customers, there's so many different bits, that, and this is why I'm using a freight forwarder. I don't need to know about all those bits. I just need to know how much it's gonna to cost to get my product insured, of course, from the port to Amazon. Um, you know, I could spend lots of time on each individual bit, but that's why we've got the freight forwarders to do that for us. Um, there's also a couple of bits down here where it says palletize, shrink wrap, and pallet labeling for free pallets. Now that's very important because the way your supplier sends it in China might not be suitable how Amazon wants it. So make sure your freight forwarder is capable of palletization and preparing your product to be shipped to Amazon. 
Um, and the next thing on there is the time delivery to Amazon as well. So it's very important that your courier pre-arranges a slot with Amazon to take the delivery. A courier just can't turn up at Amazon with a delivery because Amazon will reject it. So make sure your freight forwarder can prepare it for Amazon and also has an agreement in place of Amazon to actually accept the delivery when it arrives. So this um, cost here was £385, which I thought was a good cost. You know, I've got 800 kilos of goods being shipped from China, probably gonna take six to seven weeks to get here, which is fine, you know, obviously, I'm desperate to start selling, but if I if I air freight this product, it's not you know it's not viable. So I'm happy to wait, and it just means I'll have to be more organised when it comes to placing the next order to make sure I give myself a good six to eight weeks to get the product manufactured and get it shipped to the UK to make sure I don't go out of stock. Uh, there's also a couple of other bits at the bottom of this quote. The first one is based on the exchange rate. So at the moment, the the exchange is roughly you know 1.35 dollars to the pound, and I believe the exchange rate is set once a month uh, for customs. So you won't have any control over that, and they use that exchange rate for custom for how they calculate your um, custom duty and stuff like that. And the bit at the very bottom excludes China export docs, export license, and commodity inspection. Now your supplier should be taking care of that as part of your FOB, and the commodity inspection you can arrange to do your own inspection if you want to. Um, there's quite a few inspection companies in China that will do that for you for a fairly small cost. So the quote to the right. Let's take a look at this. So, again, you, if you look, the, the values are very similar. I mean, they, their cubic meterage is almost identical. Same weight, same postcodes. And these guys come in a bit cheaper. They were £284 and £27 for cargo insurance. So, their all in cost was £311. Now, to get 800 kilos of goods from China to Amazon, I'm pretty happy with that. And it, um, it gives me a good profit margin on my product. There's also a little note on here, which I saw in most of the quotes I've got. It says that the duties and taxes paid on your behalf will incur a 1.5 handling charge and a minimum fee of £25. So be aware of those. So when your product arrives in the UK and um, you're going to be paying customs on it and then you're going to be paying VAT on top of that, your freight forwarder will probably pay that for you so it doesn't get stuck in customs and then you'll pay the freight forwarder and in exchange for that they're going to want you to pay them a small fee. So always check the quote to see what the, um, the options are there. So those were the two quotes I got. Um, and this gives you, uh, now I can show you how this allowed me to get my landed cost per unit. So I'll talk you through, these are the exact figures for the product that I'm gonna be launching. Um, and my order's going in in like two days. Um, I'm just waiting for my business bank account to finish being set up and then I'm gonna place the order. So the unit cost at the moment is $9, which is roughly £6.80. So 500 um, units at £6.80 is £3,400. So that's how much I'm gonna be paying to my supplier then you have to add the shipping cost on top of that. So that's what my freight forwarder is gonna be charging me, which is 311 pounds. That brings us to 3,711. And then once it arrives at the port, or should I say when it arrives at the UK, the UK will put the customs duty on it. Now there's different uh, percentages for different products. 4% is a rough guideline as what to use for most products, um, but you can go on the, the HMRC website and you can look up the exact percentage you should be charging. So in this instance, Going to take that 3,711 times it by 1.04, which gives us 4% on top, and that takes us to 3,860 pound. And then we've got to add the VAT on top as well. So you get to pay VAT on the cost, the shipping cost, and the customs duty. So you pay VAT on all three things. So we take the 3,860 times it by 1.2 to give us the total cost of 4,632 and then reverse it, divide it by 500, and that brings us back to the £9.26 landed cost. So it's gonna cost me £9.26 per unit to get my product from Amazon, sorry, from uh, my supplier in China to Amazon with all fees paid, with the, the only fee I haven't included on in there is if my freight forwarder charges me a small fee for the customs handling and VAT handling. Um, and then just to, finish off the, just to finish off the calculation so you can see my full profit margin, Add your FBA fee on. Um, now for my product, the total fee is £5.97. So there's, of that £5.97, that's about split in half because there's a 15% FBA fee and then the fulfillment fee as well. So my total unit cost is £15.23. I'm gonna be selling this product at £22.99, which gives me a profit per unit of roughly £7.76, which is about $10, um, which is fine because my aim was to have a £5 profit per unit um, that, that was my aim and what that does it allows me a budget of about £2.70 per product for pay-per-click um, 
and still be able to make five pound. And if things are going slower, you know, I can afford to spend three or four pound on pay-per-click and still be making a few pound per unit as well. So that pretty much shows you my experience of shipping and freight forwarding over the last week or two. And also you can see you know, in black and white what my profit margin is hopefully gonna be on my product. And I've just got some final points to ask your freight forwarder. I think I've already covered these on the previous slides. But firstly, does a courier prepare your shipments? Because Amazon need it in a certain way. If they don't, I would probably say don't use them. You know, use a freight forwarder who is used to doing that because you don't want to get things wrong and then you've got you know a big heavy expensive shipment stuck somewhere that Amazon's rejected. Uh, the second one, does, it ha does the courier have pre-arranged delivery slots of Amazon that they can use? Check that you're insured. You know, you don't want to be shipping in three, four thousand pounds of goods if they're not insured once your freight forwarder collects them. And I mean, for the sake of you know that example I gave you, I think the company charged twenty-seven pound. Uh, just, just get it. It's such a small amount. Just insure your products. And finally, what are their fees for paying duty and VAT on your behalf? So the add-on charge one percent or one and a half percent. So check that. Maybe some freight forwarders will offer the option where if you just pay the HMRC directly, that they won't actually charge you a fee for for duty and VAT. But check that with each freight forwarder that you you get a quote from. Um, and finally, yeah, please like and subscribe to the channel. New videos coming, well, I say videos, new video coming every week.